Whoa, are you in the right place at the right time? You're about to watch a video review of a watch coming to us from Zaples that uh, is called the Watch 9 from Lenovo. And this is what's cool. The, since we finished this review, Zaples has created a whole new website called Zaples Style. And guess what? They're featuring the Watch 9. But they're doing it as their trailblazing grand opening item for sale. So with this coupon code, you get this price. If you go in and set yourself up on Zaples Style, rather than what I'm talking about in the video, Zaples itself. Okay, let's get on with the review. Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. This is a channel dedicated to smartwatches on YouTube and now accessible at smartwatchticks.com. Give it a try. Should bring you right over here much faster. We've got an unbagging for you leading to an unboxing. Yeah, we've been waiting a while for this one. In fact, this has come and gone. And it's come back because it's sold out so fast. Whoa. Whoa, there it is, Lenovo. It sold out so fast that, uh, well, I basically had to wait until they had it back in stock. Who is they? Well, you saw it on the back of the box. Zaples! Our good buddies at Zaples. Have you got a Zaples account yet? These are the only guys I've seen that um, they'll send you emails every now and then and offer you something for free. You just got to pay like a nickel or a quarter for postage or something just so you can go through the system. But um, pretty cool. Odd stuff. You know, nothing like a Mercedes or something. But anyway, check it out. Uh, Zaples, uh, you can pick up the Watch 9. Check the show notes down below. And I guarantee you we got you a, a coupon for a good price on this one as well. What's inside the Watch 9? Well, first of all, I'd never seen anything like this until I saw something earlier that we've already reviewed that can do a little of what this one does. And you can check the show notes for the link to that review because I'm not going to tell you about it, but I'm going to show you what happens with this Watch 9, which, by the way, is quite a bit less expensive than the other version. As I'm scrolling through here and you're able to read all of the special features of this watch, including... Serious waterproofing, look at that, to five atmospheres. It's a basic tethering smartwatch that's going to let you do things like find your phone, and incoming call messaging, uh, doing a you know selfie button kind of thing so you can click a picture from your phone off your watch. So let's tear into this thing. Let's see what we got. What is so special about the Watch 9 that has everybody buzzing on it? It's uh, really a, a regular watch, a, a regular analog watch, but with some special capabilities. And it's in here really good too, okay. Wow. Ah, there we go. Ah, cool. Okay. Well, we got QR codes to start with on the manual. And there it is. A nice little presentation box. This is the black one. All black. Black body. Black TPU band. And as you can see, regular watch hands with four little tickers. And by the way, I've heard they glow in the dark too. So they're luminescent. A nice stainless steel back. Looks like a regular watch, doesn't it? Yeah, we're going to learn more about this. Anything else under here? Nope, nope. It's just the watch and the manual. And the manual says watch nine. And it's hopefully in both English. Oh, it's all in English? No, this is the Chinese side. This is Chinese. Wow, I thought what we just read, it said there was an English manual. Hmm. <laughs> watch nine. Son of a gun, sure looks like it's all Chinese to me. What about you? All right, I'm just going to show you the pages. If you want to throw Google Translator on it, you can and uh, try to figure it out. Or if the uh, icons and the images are good enough, you might be able to figure it out from there. 
then obviously you and I are going to have to go through it to figure it out ourselves. We're definitely going to need the app. There's the QR codes for iOS or Android. You can scan them from the screen. Not knowing what they are, I can't really tell you which we should download, but check the show notes. I'm, uh, if you haven't noticed, in every one of the videos that uses a uh, tethering app, I'm starting to list the uh, tethering app name and give you the link to the Google Play Store to pick up that app directly in the show notes. Uh, so makes life a little easier for you. Now here we've got, I don't know, different kind of scanning QR codes. Okay, well that's that information and this is the watch. I don't see a charger anywhere, so it must be already charged up. I'm going to clear everything out and we'll run through this watch, see what it'll do. So first of all, let's prep it. We've got this little cover, a uh, little plastic cover you can see on the back of the stainless steel back. We'll remove that. And, you know, why? Why would I want plastic on the front of what they claim to be a premium sapphire glass 9H hardness, almost as hard as diamond? Ah, uh, stainless steel shell. I mean, it's already perfect. And it's got plastic on the front of it that's easy to gouge. And look at that. Look at that. Absolutely ridiculous. What I do, I'm sorry, is take this stuff off. It's sapphire glass. It's not going to break. It's not going to scratch. There's no need to have the silly protector on the front of it. So there we go. I'm all prepped. Ooh, a little sweaty on the back. But my stainless steel back is there. My nice, clean glass front is there. And now it's going to look really, really nice. Let's walk through. I got one button on the side. That is it. So it does a couple of things. I press it once. It lights a little red light right there. And it kind of, I don't know if you saw the second hand, snapped over and froze. So it's in kind of a uh, waiting mode for, for setting the time, which we do from the tethering app. Two presses is nothing. But if I press it long rather than short, whoop, that was a short. You see everything like whip around. Press it long. There. It vibrated. And it sounded my alarm. So that's the long press, or let's call it intermediate, because a really long press gets it flashing and turns it off. And there's really not much more I can say about it. You just have the button and you have the time. You have one light on that top little uh, marker. The markers and the hands glow in the dark. And you have some uh, highlights down here. Looks like they could be lights or indicators, but they don't appear to be when I've had it all set up for notifications, whether it's an incoming phone call, a push of a notification, or an alarm or whatever, the phone or the watch just vibrates. That's all I'm getting out of it. I don't really, uh, I don't believe it has a sound uh, coming from it, just vibration. Okay, um, the bands, yes, they're removable. You can see that. And we'll take a measurement of them so you can get replacements if you'd rather have something nice and leather or different than this uh, TPU band. Okay, measuring about mm, 20. I'd call it 20 millimeters for the bands. All right, let's check out now the tethering app because that's really where the magic happens. Oh, mamma mia, this is complicated. I thought this was going to be easy. Well, it, it's going to be easy for you. It's been really a challenge for me. Okay, here's the deal. When you scan that QR code and you try to go in and figure out what app you're supposed to download you get to this page it's all chinese to me well turns out you don't push that big green button you got to push that button right there to download the english version of the lenovo watch app which looks like that and is not in the google play store at least not yet so here's the deal in the show notes down below i'm going to put a link to a special website that explains all this and shows you some pictures of the right thing to do to make sure you get the right um, tethering app for your phone because it's uh, it's important if you go into this one 
you're going to basically download the Lenovo store, which is sort of like the Google Play Store, but for Lenovo. And it's not going to have this in here. So that's the first thing. The next little issue you're going to run into is this one. When you first set up an account, which you got to do, then you got to log into your account, which you got to do. Then you get into the app itself, you can see in the background, within a few seconds after you get it tethered to the watch, you're going to be prompted for a firmware upgrade. I'm having a challenge with mine not taking this. If I say update, it goes into this firmware update mode, stuck at 0%, and it just locks up right there. And because of this, and I can't use the back button to get out, I literally have to force close the app clean it out of memory, and start again. Yeah, I know. Uh, until that is resolved, and hopefully you'll get the firmware update to your watch, and it won't be an issue. But for me, anytime I get that notice, it kind of locks me up. But there's a workaround. Keep watching. Once you've cleared memory and you get in here, if you touch something and get into one of the pages, it seems to abort that attempt to uh, do an update. So... Trick is, load it, touch something like your steps or your sleep time or whatever right away. And as long as you don't go into something I'll show you later, you're going to be okay in roaming around the app and not being stuck in that uh, update loop. All right, we're in the opening page of the Lenovo Watch English version app, not available from the Play Store that you've downloaded manually and set everything up through side loading so that you can actually work with it. In here, you can go into the Me section, and actually when you set it up, you can put in your, um, your nickname, and uh, this is your health goals. You can set your steps and your sleep time, and then you have settings, feedback, and about. And I'm pretty sure it's right in here. We don't want to go in, but if you go into just basic settings, it allows you to log out, or you can set your time to 12 or 24 hour mode, you're probably going to want to have it on 24-hour mode for what we're going to show you because, after all, it's an analog watch. There's no AM or PM or 2300 or 11 p AM or PM. You know, it's, it's just an analog watch we're working with. So stick with 24 hours, even if you like 12, and units, metric, or feet. And uh, it seemed that when I was prompted to put in my data, it was in metric anyway. So I'm not even sure that that's really working for that part. But that's in the unit setting here from settings and the uh, goals are there and feedback is a place where you can go in and uh, report problems which i'm going to be reporting about the update not working for the firmware and you can actually put in your contact uh, email information so maybe this is a way to get some actual connection with these guys uh, i hope so okay and that is all in the me section, which we jumped into over here. The device section now, there, it said it was connected. This is where you can set up some fun things like a remote shutter. So when you go in here, I get a camera mode and it's saying either press the button or shake the watch. Now I'm shaking the camera so you can see it moving. So when I press the button now, you see it froze and it took a picture. And that picture is right here. And so you can basically take a selfie with the watch by pressing it or just shaking it once you go into that mode from the app itself. Also, you have a little speaker that you can have turned on or not. I don't think you heard it, but it'll make a little sound. It's, it seemed, uh, I think it was coming from the app itself that uh, tells you that the picture was taken. And that's where you can flip the camera uh, around front to back. But nothing for setting up a flash or any of that other stuff. It's just kind of a quick selfie like that. We leave out of here and we move into Smart Alarm. And this is your basic alarms. You can turn them on, turn them off, days of the week. You can edit it up here, change the time, uh, do all the things. And it will cause a nice loud alarm on your phone and it'll also uh, vibrate the watch. Okay, smart reminder, your typical call message reminder. You can do sedentary reminders, setting times, intervals, all of those kind of things, a do not disturb period, very robust. And then application message, uh, messages, messages, notifications 
uh, from all of these different types of apps. Can't miss my Twitter feed. Ha ha ha. I don't have a Twitter. I just follow a certain guy. Um, Facebook and so forth, Skype and whatnot, and a couple of others that we probably don't know about. You can confirm it up here. And uh, again, the only thing that's going to happen in the Watch 9 itself is a vibration. There's no lights that lights up. That little light at the top is only happening when you're doing, uh, turning it on to do kind of a Bluetooth tethering, turning it on and off, all that stuff. Uh, notifications is just by vibration. So you're not going to get a lot from this watch as far as notifications go, but it's a really sweet little analog watch. Okay, that's all of that in the smart reminder section. Heart rate test is really interesting. You notice there's no heart rate monitor on the stainless steel back. When you go into heart rate test, it turns on the camera and the light and it's going to do the same kind of thing that the regular heart rate sensor would on a watch, but it's doing it from your phone. So it's telling you about your reference heart rate and such. And if you cover, now this one's wild. I got the camera and the light here. So I'm going to put my finger over the camera and the light shining through. And whoa, right away, it goes through and finds uh, the capillary movement of blood, blood movement through the capillaries. Well, I thought it was going to come up right away. Oh, that light's getting kind of hot. Okay, came back and said 57. It's slow. I would agree with that. I don't think it's that low. When will we ever get an accurate heart rate? Oh, well, that's a, a fun little thing. And you can download the app for free, you know, so you could go ahead and test that out on your phone to see how accurate your phone is, as long as you've got a uh, camera and a uh, flash, I guess, on, on the back of your phone. Now, watch mode is your overall do not disturb that you can set the periods that you want. 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. was the standard. I created an 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. one to test it out, and it works. You can add them. You can edit them. And uh, the watch won't vibrate uh, during that period. Okay, now we get to the fun start. Well, let's do the disconnect reminder. When you turn that on, uh, if you are far enough away from your watch uh, or you lose Bluetooth connection for some reason, then your phone will make a, a little sound to let you know that you've been disconnected. Now, the pointer calibration. This is a, this is a thing that makes this so cool. There, you see that image? Now look on here. This is the watch. And uh, this uh, is representative of the current time. It says it's 10 o'clock p.m. a.m., I'm sorry. And if I go to the watch right here and I make note of the hour of the hands, okay, see it's 6, 7. So it's 7, 19, right? 7, 19. And the second hand is at 38. So I'm going to come here to hour. I'm going to go 7, okay, 07, and what did I say, 19 for the minutes, and the seconds was 38. So I've matched what we're seeing on the watch in here digitally. I'm going to check that, and now I'm going to hit start. And the actual time was just about 10.01 a.m. And this is saying it's 7 something or other. So I hit start and all of a sudden, after it transmits that, look what's happening on the watch. We showed you this briefly in the uh, little quick video. Now we're way far away because I did some stuff that caused this thing to stop and um, let it now catch up. So it's got to go all the way up till 10 o'clock-ish. And it only goes in one direction. So... If by chance you're ahead a little bit, you know, if the watch is running fast and you want to reset it and you start it then, it's going to have to go all the way around. That's going to take a bunch of your battery power. So smartest thing is to stop it, pause it so that uh, it will lag a little bit, at least your, your actual time. And when it does, then when you do this, it can go around and catch up. So I'm going to come out of here and show you a couple of other things. 
Here's the step area, and I don't have any data in it right now, but yesterday I had this. This is uh, the steps when I acquired those steps throughout the day. And it's talking about the uh, mileage of 1.12 kilometers and um, the calories burned and total number of steps. And you can go back and forth day by day right there. Now, the other thing is the uh, sleep time. This is an interesting chart. Check it out. Here's the sleep time from last night. I'm not sure about the two circles. It looks like, I guess, awake is all the way out on the outside. And, uh, no, awake is that one. Okay, low sleep, deep sleep. Anyway, here's your arc of time. It's not something you can go into and actually explore, but it tells you low sleep, deep sleep, and wake time. I was up a few times during the night. It did not log those in, which is interesting. Here's yesterday when I first tried it. Wow, 17 hours of sleep, huh? Hmm. Um, I had to watch off some throughout the day, especially the latter part of the day. Well, not sure about the calibration of the data for the sleep monitor, but those are the two data points I have for you last night and the night before, because before that I didn't have it. There we go. And that's it. You've got step count, you've got sleep, and then you've got... Uh, we showed you the remote shutter from the other screen, but you have it here as well. The smart alarms also and the heart rate were all from the device screen. And then you have this thing called a plan. And you can create a plan with a topic heading, which I did. And then you can, uh, and I was messing around with this. Oh, there we go. We finally ended up, look at that. We're at 10.06 now. What's it say on the clock? About 10.05. 10.06 right now. There, it just clicked over when the second hand hit. So it's calibrated now through that fancy process. Okay. Yeah, I was going to do the unboxing, uh, collect some steps, and record the full review, and, and set those things up as reminders in this whole um, task-oriented plan section, which works. Um, and I guess you could do this if you wanted to, like, maintain plans for stuff that you do but it doesn't correlate that well with the watch because there's no display to show you any of that and i don't recall getting vibrations for them either but you might uh, whoops we're disconnected again as well all right well you're getting to see the good the bag and the strange i guess of of this watch um and that's the overall app the lenovo watch app i showed you the me here's where you have all of those settings oh and um, I mentioned that whole problem that we had with the firmware update. Well, I tried it once and I just left the phone on. I put it on a long timeout and sure enough, it actually finally got started and it did the uh, firmware update to system version 1.4.5. Did that perfectly. Oh, these are other watches it's looking for. And uh, it, it's now firmware updated and so now I'm not having a problem with the app constantly trying to update the watch and not getting anywhere you just have to be patient for that to work okay the app the watch that's the review so once again we originally told you that this watch is available from zaples however since the review is completed zaples created a whole new enterprise called zaples style featuring the lenovo watch 9 and I could say, look in the show notes for a discount coupon, but I'll do even better. I'll show it to you on the screen because grand opening of Zapel Style features the Lenovo Watch 9 at that price using that coupon. Yeah, I'll have the link in the show notes as well. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Thanks for your presence and your interest and have fun with your new Watch 9.